WTN invites you to join us for benediction and devotions from the Shrine of the Most Blessed Sacrament at Our Lady of the Angels Monastery in Hansville, Alabama. We offer the adoration prayer, which may be found on page four of the Healing Service booklet. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. My Lord Jesus Christ, I believe believe that that you are really here in this sacrament. Night and day you remain here, compassionate and loving. You call, you wait for, You welcome everyone who comes to visit you. I thank you, Jesus, my divine Redeemer, for coming upon the earth for our sake and for instituting the adorable sacrament of the Holy Eucharist. 
in order to remain with us until the end of the world. I thank you for hiding beneath the Eucharistic species, your infinite majesty and beauty, which your angels delight to behold, so that I might have courage to approach the throne of your mercy. I thank you, dear Jesus, for having become the priceless victim to merit for me the fullness of heavenly favors. Awaken in me such confidence in you that their fullness may descend ever more fruitfully upon my soul. I thank you for offering yourself in thanksgiving to God for all his benefits, spiritual and temporal, which he has bestowed on me. Grant me grace and perseverance in your faithful service. Amen. A reading from the book of Revelation. I, John, saw the holy city, a new Jerusalem coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, God's dwelling is with the human race. God will dwell with them and they will be his people, and God himself will always be with them as their, as their God. <clears throat> the word of the Lord. <clears throat> <clears throat> the late uh, John Paul II uh, called Our Lady the star of evangelization. And the apparition of Our Lady of Guadalupe in December 1531 really proved to be a turning point in the evangelization of the Americas. Of course, Our Lady of Guadalupe has been named as the patron of the Americas. And it said that the apparition marked the beginning of the huge number of conversion of the Aztec Indians. It was said that before the apparition took place, missionaries had uh, baptized mostly infants and those who were dying. But after the apparition, thousands of Indians began flocking every day to seek baptism from missionaries. Some priests had to baptize as many as 6,000 people a day. And one missionary records that at his uh, Franciscan friary, he baptized 14,200 Indians in the course of five days. And one Franciscan missionary named uh, Father Peter Ghent uh, testified that during his missionary assignment in Mexico, he alone baptized around one million Indians. That's a lot of baptism. Many Indians were coming to these Franciscan missionaries seeking for baptism and seeking to be uh, received into the Catholic Church. And one Franciscan friar named Jeronimo uh, de Mendieta, uh, he testified about those who came uh, for baptism. He said this, As they were being baptized, many of them received the sacrament with tears in their eyes. Who would dare say that they came without faith? It was hard for them to come from such faraway places when no one was compelling them to do so to receive the sacrament of baptism. And then, uh, just eight years after the apparition, 
it was in 1539, almost 9 million Aztec Indians had converted to the Catholic Church. Indeed, Our Lady is the star of evangelization. To St. Juan Diego, Our Lady of Guadalupe said, Know and understand that I am the ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of the true God through whom all things live. It is my ardent desire that a church be built here so that in it I can show and bestow my love, my compassion, my help, and my protection to all who inhabit this land and to those others who love me, that they might call upon and confide in me. So Our Lady revealed to Juan Diego that she is the mother of the true God through whom all things live. The ever-Virgin Mary is the mother of Jesus, and Jesus is not just any holy man or any holy prophet as other religions thought, but he is truly God as well. He is truly present here on the altar under the appearance of bread. Uh, Padre Eduardo Chavez, he is uh, one of the experts on Our Lady of Guadalupe, he pointed out that Jesus Christ, our Lord, is the center of the Guadalupan event. He said, He is the one who gives us sustenance with His body and blood. And for this reason, the ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of the true God, wants a church built. She said that she wants to offer all her love, and her love is none other than her own Son, Jesus Christ, through God and through man. So he said the center of her message, the center of the image of Our Lady of Guadalupe is not her, but it's all about her son. She shows herself as the immaculate tabernacle of God, as the spotless dwelling place of God. I remember when I went to visit the Basilica of Our Lady of Guadalupe several years ago, Somebody pointed this out to me before I went there. Uh, had, had this person not mentioned anything, I probably wouldn't, uh, wouldn't know. Of course, everybody knows where the Telma is located. But then there's this big, giant, huge tabernacle in the basilica where it contains... Our Lord, this is the biggest tabernacle I've ever seen. If you think this tabernacle is big, you haven't seen anything yet. It's huge. And of course, Our Lady is not God. She is the mother of the true God. In a way, she is like Him, that she is the same yesterday, today, and forever, as the star of evangelization. She always leads others to her son, Jesus, who is the true God, who is truly present in the Eucharist. And where a Catholic church is, there is Jesus Christ present in the Eucharist. Like the book of Revelation said, God truly dwells with human race. He will always dwell here with us, and we will be his people, and God himself will always be with us as our God.
Deus qui nobis sub sacramento mirabili passionis tu in memoriam relequisti, tribue quesumus, itanos corporis et sanguinis tui sacra misteria venerari, ut redemptionis tue fructum in nobis igiter sensiamus, qui vivis et regnas in saecula saeculorum. The divine praises. Blessed be God. Blessed be his holy name. Blessed be Jesus Christ through God and through men. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Blessed be his most sacred heart. Blessed be his most precious blood. Blessed be Jesus in the most holy sacrament of the altar. <clears throat> Blessed be the Holy Spirit, the paraclete. Blessed be the great Mother of God, Mary Most Holy. Blessed be her holy and immaculate conception. Blessed be her glorious assumption. Blessed be the name of Mary, Virgin and Mother. Blessed be Saint Joseph, her most chaste spouse. Blessed be God in his angels and in his saints. May the heart of Jesus in the most blessed sacrament be praised, adored, and loved with grateful affection at every moment in all the tabernacles of the world, even until the end of time. Amen.